Thank you very much, Francis. My mission, or missio, as would be the Latin from the 1590s of the Jesuits, uh, sending abroad is project number nine to attempt to persuade you all of something. Think, don't act. The purpose of my speech is to persuade you all, but I'm going to try to make it a little bit personal with perhaps some impersonal ideas, philosophies, politics, and history. Those are three big interests of mine, possibly my biggest three, I guess, out of law school. And I'm going to try to persuade you with these three tools, think, don't act. So where did I get this idea from of the opposite, uh, to act and not to think? It comes from this quote of uh, Karl Marx in uh, his thesis on Feuerbach. Often German philosophers write little paragraphs called aphorisms, and this is aphorism number 11. And philosophers have only interpreted the, the world uh, so far, and the point is to change it. The way, the way I interpret this is he's telling us, don't think. We've been thinking for far too long. We should start acting. So that's the Karl Marx idea. Act, don't think, at least in this thesis. And that's how I interpret it. It's, and this is the entire thesis right here. It can often be read by itself. <coughs> of course, there's 10 other ones prior to it of similar length. And I think that's a big part of philosophy. Just look at a sentence or two and just for a day and you're trying to figure out what it says. So this is my interpretation. He's telling us, act, don't think. And I'm going to try to tell you to think and not act. So actually, uh, I always like giving a little personal anecdote. I first heard this quote in, in a place you'd expect to hear of Karl Marx and communist quotes. I was actually in New York visiting some family, and uh, it was, uh, I believe, September or October of 2011, and the Occupy Wall Street protests were going on. And I wasn't part of it, but if you ever see a big crowd, it's always nice to go see, see what's going on. And some of my friends were, I guess, unfortunately, part of, part of the, the protests, and the, they like to share Karl Marx, and uh, that's where I first saw this quote of, uh, trying to act and change the world. And I think that's probably a big impetus in, in groups occupied. But I'm not trying to be political. It's just just throwing that. That's my personal anecdote. I was there, and that's where I first saw it. Incidentally, I, the summer before, being the summer of 2011, I read this quote. It's the end of aphorism 66 of, a, I guess, another German philosopher, Wittgenstein. And this is the end of a long aphorism. To repeat, don't think but look. That's kind of interesting, right? He's telling us, don't think, but you should look. Uh, <laughs> actually, yeah, that's, that's that. So, philosophy. What I say it is, it's logical steps. We're building up slowly but surely, kind of like law school, right? We have the rule, and we try to apply it, weave in the facts. I think philosophy, at its best, is really trying to have logical steps in the same way an appellate brief would have or a trial brief. So, next interest of mine, history, right? I, 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 okay, so this is wrong. I actually meant uh, if philosophy can be used for interpreting the past, and I wrote philosophy interpreting the future. So, the, you can use logical steps to interpret what happened in the past. So, take that assumption with me, and I'll, I'll show you how it works. Uh, it, it, interpreting the past so we can go forward with politics. And just wanted to throw in politics, police, citizen. I'm a citizen, you guys are citizens. You all should think. You should use philosophy to, oh, that's my phone. Uh, <laughs> you should use philosophy to uh, interpret the, oh, it's nice, you know, I can come out here, you know, rise and rise the crowds. I'm like politicians these days. I should get down in there with you guys. Uh, and, and so I, as a citizen, I'm going to try to interpret the, the past. And this is one of my, I think it's my penultimate slide. So the 20th century, right? A lot of things happened. And I'd say it was largely influenced by Marx. Philosophically speaking, logically speaking, a lot of what, this is a picture of 1972 from one of the Apollo missions. I, I don't know, there's not a good picture to summarize the entire 20th century, but here's one. So 
so much of the 20th century was just people acting. Of course, there was a lot of thought going on in uh, what happened, but a lot of people just acted. I think what happened was, you can pick any point, Vietnam, World War II, World War I, Korea, all these things, colonialism, uh, all these things happened, and I, all, largely, I don't think uh, many of the, the initial goals were even met. None of the missions were met. And I think one of the problems that I contend to you was that they perhaps didn't think out everything. You could use so many examples. I mean, did, if, we, if people would have known the consequences of World War I, I doubt any of one would ever have marched. If they knew the consequences of World War II, hopefully they wouldn't have marched. So because so much has happened that was negative from acting and not thinking, I urge you all to think. So maybe we can all give some input. Contra the wave of 150 years of Karl Marx and to think to make the world, this place, a little bit better. So whatever you do, think. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Oh, boy.